Welcome, uh, webinar listeners. Thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Amir, and we have a very, very, very exciting show for you today. So um, welcome. Come on in. Uh, settle down. Get your audio set up. Do what you need to do. Uh, we honestly don't have very much time because we got to get going, and uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover today. Uh, super, super special guest with us. Uh, Mia is here. Our, uh, I'm looking this way because Mia is over here on my screen. Sorry. She's our uh, social media expert, and she's here to tell you on how to up your social media game, which is uh, incredibly important, uh, you know, regardless to say with, with any business. So uh, welcome, Mia. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Nick. Good to be here. Fantastic. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and dive right in and uh, see what we have here. Um, okay. So uh, we'll... You know, all the uh, video assets that you have, you, you, you may not be aware of this, but uh, if you go into your model page, you've got these uh, uh, image and video assets that are kind of pre-generated for you. We're going to go into how to manually do that. We get this question a ton, and that is all these little teaser reels that we have available for you. How can I customize that? Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that. And then after that, we're going to talk about um upping your social game with uh with mia so uh don't have a whole lot of time like i said because there is a lot to cover so let's go ahead and get to it um all right so you're familiar with these little automated videos i guess so you, if you go to your model page and you go into downloads uh you see down here you've got uh, photos and you've got the little videos up here at the top there are three videos uh, a long, a short, and a GIF uh, that just repeats. And it basically looks like this. It just kind of comes around, zooms out to, to the dollhouse view, and then come back, comes back in uh, a different room. And it just automatically chooses which room it's going to go into. It doesn't ask you for any kind of input. It tries to figure out you know, what a bedroom is or what a living room is, what a kitchen is, and kind of show those. Uh, and that's it. That, that's what you get. And they're, they're great because they're automated and they're ready for you to use. Um, and you can just, you know, upload them into social media and, and go. But if they're not quite right and you want it maybe a little bit longer, you're not looking for uh, a teaser, but you want an entire reel, like turning your highlight reel into a video. Uh, let's look and see how that's done. Uh, okay. So... First of all, let me just mention that how to capture photos to include in things like social media posts. We've got material on that, so I'm not going to get into it right here. Uh, if you go to Matterport Academy, if you just go to um, Matterport.com and uh, go into the resources tab, go down to Matterport Academy, you'll find uh, all, all everything, all the videos about the, the different tools in workshop and you know capturing photos is one of them. Uh, this is more using, you know, other software and whatnot uh, outside of Matterport. And that's done uh, right here. So you've got the automated assets that we just looked at. Uh, what you need to know about are these parameters and maybe others. Uh, but these are the most important that I've found to be very, very useful. Uh, and we'll go into what a parameter is and what it does. But uh, ampersand MT equals zero. MT is for matter tag. So this allows you to um, walk through the model manually as opposed to just hitting play on the highlight reel. Uh, so it gives you a little bit more control. You also don't have to set up a highlight reel and it removes the matter tags. So you're in showcase, you've got the matter tags there. Uh, you can add this ampers this uh, MT equals zero to the end of your showcase link and that'll just get rid of all the matter tags so then they're, so they're not um, displayed in your video. Uh, ampersand title equals zero, another one to keep in mind, that'll remove that little title in the top left corner. Uh, you can minimize it, but there's still that little arrow. And if you're recording the full screen, and that's how we're doing this, by the way, for the most part, I'll get into the secret menu later. Uh, but for the most part, you're using an application, something like QuickTime. If you're on a Mac, that works great. I use that all the time. If you're on a PC, uh, you have um, ice cream that you can use. Uh, and if you're either on Mac or PC, actually, uh, I've been using a lot of OBS lately, and you can find an insane amount of tutorials on YouTube on, on how to use OBS to screen record. So that's essentially what we're doing to create these. 
Uh, you're either playing through a highlight reel that you've created and just recording the screen, uh, or you are uh, manually navigating through the, your uh, showcase uh, model, your, through your model in showcase, and again, just recording the screen. Uh, so because you're recording the screen, you want to kind of maybe clean it up a little bit if you don't intend on actually you know, going into any matter tags. So getting rid of the matter tags, getting rid of that little title in the top uh, left corner just keeps it a lot cleaner. Uh, there's no way of getting rid of uh, some of the icons at the bottom, but what you'll end up doing is just cropping them out. And uh, we'll get into what the KB equals zero in a second. That's not as, I guess, widely used. I don't use it very often, but but in some some cases. So I just wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, so that's that's it. Uh, so let's go ahead and um, check out how to to do this. So you can uh, you can see my screen back here. I'm in this model, and uh, and I'm in I'm in Workshop, and I bring up the the highlight reel, and I basically just set up a highlight uh, reel the way the way you would normally set it up, right? Um, again, if you're a little unfamiliar with how to set up a highlight reel, Matterport Academy is a great resource to use. So I'm going to start. Uh, over here, and uh, then I'm going to work my way uh, over here to this scene and keep going down and round. And so every time uh, I hit Add View, it has a, it adds another highlight reel, and I can just hit the the play button, and it's going to go and navigate uh, through these. And so as it's navigating, I'm going to record the screen. I don't want to. Uh, record this screen. I want this to be full screen, obviously. So after I've set up my highlight reel, I will uh, X out of workshop and hit the publish button, make sure that it's published. And I'm going to exit because what I want to do is grab the share link. So I'm going to copy the share link and then go open up a new window and paste that in here. And then hit enter and it opens up and now I've got my highlight reel loaded uh, just in case it's not working. If you run into any trouble, check, oops, check the uh, little settings uh, button right here and go into tours and highlights. Make sure both of these are active. So my highlight reel is active. I'm in showcase and you can see that I've got this in the top corner here so that, uh, you know, it's not as clean. Like I said, I can minimize it, but I just want to get rid of this altogether. And um, and so what I'll do is I'll go into my URL here and I'll say ampersand title equals zero. And I'm already going to do the matter tags and, and to, uh, to get rid of them, even though I don't think this model has any ampersand MT equals zero. Put that into the URL, hit enter, it'll reload the model. And now you can see that there's no title up in the corner here. All right. Uh, so now I'll go through, create my highlight reel. I'll set up uh, something like uh, QuickTime and I'll hit record full screen. And down here, I'll just go ahead and hit full screen so that it, you know, basically gets into full screen mode, uh, gets rid of the top uh, uh, stuff in, in my browser and, and just makes it nice and clean. And so now I'm recording the full screen uh, with my showcase model being full screen. I can do a couple things. I can just go ahead and hit play, get my cursor out of the way and it'll start recording, right? Um, oh, other tips that I wanted to mention here, let me get out of full screen. In the highlight reel tool, this I find very, very helpful. Um, go into the edit uh, icon right here. This is for kind of the overall. You've got these little edit icons uh, for each highlight itself, but this is for the, the reel in general. And make sure that your rotation speed is set to slow, uh, dollhouse speed set to slow, uh, the uh, pan, uh, the um, uh, floor plan uh, zoom is set to slow, everything and transitions also, uh, everything here is set to slow, slow, slow. I want to record this with everything happening kind of in slow motion uh, in a way that's 
almost annoying, really, if you were just to watch it at that speed, uh, in my opinion. But what that does is, in a way, it increases the frame rate to and to basically result in a much uh, higher frame rate, smoother uh, um, video at the end, right? So once that's captured in slow, what I'll do in my editing application, you can use any editing application, the one that you know comes with your computer, whether it's iMovie on a Mac, um, or if you want to upgrade to Premiere or something like that. Uh, but any really, really basic, simple, the simplest editing applications can do this. They can splice uh, video, cut the, the, uh, the recording at the beginning and at the end, so you just keep the section you want. They can take out bits uh, from the middle, and um, I would assume that most of them can also uh, speed up the video in, in general. Uh, so that's what you're going to do here. You're going to record slow and then speed it up, uh, and it gives you just a lot more control over how you, uh, the end result. So we're going to hit done there. And so I recorded everything, and it's, uh, it's in QuickTime, and I've saved it to my computer, and then I bring it into my editing application, again, whichever one you're comfortable using. Uh, cut the, the first part, did you trim the, the ends, the, the bookends off the first part before you hit record or before you hit play, and uh, in the end, after it stopped. Other tips that uh, you may want to keep in mind if you're recording manually, uh, keep in mind, I can just get rid of my cursor and use uh, my keyboard commands, A, W, S, and D. Uh, I can use uh, W and the uh, left and right arrow keys to pan left and right. So I can use uh, W and S to move back and forth, uh, left and right to move, uh, left and right arrows to, to pan left and right. And so I can use those to... Uh, to kind of navigate through as I'm recording the screen. Now, what that does, it's manually recording. Um, what I what I see when I do that, you want to be in showcase when you do that, so you can again fill the the frame uh, with with the uh, with the screen with uh, with your recording and not have any of that extra stuff in there. I'm going to fill the frame. And what you'll notice is I've got the little circles down here that I may not want to have that as part of my recording. Uh, so if you're not using the highlight reel, having set the highlight reel to uh, be slow is not going to help you. But there's another way to do that. So if you're manually recording, and I've just set my recorder, I've set, you know, again, QuickTime or OBS or Ice Cream, I'm recording. And so I can go through this uh, and navigate as I'm recording. I don't want the little circles on here, and I need this to move a little bit slower. Press the letter P on your keyboard, and you can do a couple things here. Uh, one is you can get rid of the matter tags right here, so you can check uncheck this to remove them. The little white circles, you can uncheck this box to remove them, and you can change your rotation and transition speed uh, right here. So rotation speed. We'll take that down and transition speed will uh, the transition time, the time it takes to, uh, to transition, uh, bring that up, kind of slows it down. So now you can see that when I move forward, uh, let's see here, transition should be a lot slower. Rotation speed slowed down. There you go. I want to increase that even more. This isn't nearly as slow as I was expecting, to be honest. Uh, there might be a little bit of a bug with this, but that's okay. Uh, so that's normally how that's done. Uh, if it's not working in this browser, I don't even know if I think I'm using Chrome or something like that. Try a different web browser, and, and a lot of times that'll uh, overcome some uh, small bugs or just... Uh, quit and refresh. So that's how you set up whether you're recording manually uh, and just kind of using your keyboard to navigate through. I would not use my mouse because then that mouse is going to be recorded. So I'd get rid of the mouse, put it in the, you know, in the corner um, or just put it off screen somewhere uh, so it's not in your way and just use the keyboard to navigate through. All right.
Um, that's about it. Uh, let me escape this and press the letter P again to get rid of that little menu in the corner there. And let's see. So we've got um, a couple samples of videos that I recorded. Let me try uh, seeing if this works. Okay, there's that. All right, so you can see how it uh, goes across. This was the, the highlight reel that I recorded. Um, I didn't do any kind of manual setup or anything like that. I just recorded the highlight reel. And you can see that every time it gets to, uh, to another highlight, it stops, it, uh, it rotates, it pans. Uh, and if I don't want that, if I want to avoid that, if I just want a single kind of pass through the house without stopping, Sometimes if you just do uh, a couple, every time you do a highlight reel, it'll automatically just stop there and pan. Uh, but if you don't want that, that's where that last parameter, uh, KB equals zero, that's where that comes in handy. And so you can set that up. And uh, let's see here, you can see, uh, nope. Okay, so if we go into here, let's, uh, let me get this. Okay, there we go. If I hit play, we'll go and start out at the very first uh, highlight there, and then the next one that's selected. And it pans, right? You can see that it's panning very, very slowly in this case because I've got that setting uh, there. I'm just going to go ahead and pause that. Uh, I don't want this to go this way. I just want to transition from, you know, back here and, in, and I want to go into uh, this area over here and check out the wine cellar. Okay. But I don't want to go this route. I want to go a different route. I'm going to have to set up multiple highlights, uh, but I don't want it to stop and pan every time. So uh, what you do is add your ampersand kb equals zero there's no limit to how many parameters you can add uh, if you're unfamiliar with the parameters i highly recommend checking out our support pages at support.matterport.com and just search uh, in the search bar there uh, put in url hit enter and you'll find url parameters there uh, it has a whole list of a whole bunch of them that you can do it's a great way of customizing showcase uh, for your needs so I'll hit enter. And now with this in there, let's try this again. I'll hit play. It's gonna start here and you can see that already it's not, it's not panning, right? It's just, it's just stationary. And then it goes and navigates its way to the next highlights. And it'll stop at that highlight. And again, it's not panning. So unfortunately, there's no way of saying uh, don't pan specifically on this one highlight, but pan on the rest. You can't pick and choose. It's either all or nothing. Um, but this is what allows me to uh, capture uh, a smooth kind of transition around corners and, and, and you know going the path that, that I choose. What I'll do is I'll record this. And then I'll bring that into uh, my editing application and I'll just cut where it pauses. So with that pause kind of removed, it just, it's a seamless transition. And uh, you can see that in this video here. So this is that exactly. I just transitioned and I'm going in and you can see where I previously paused there. I just cut that out. So it just kind of goes and I go around, no more pausing, and just makes it through. So for whatever reason, if you might need that, I needed this recently, so I used it. Uh, so if you need it, just remember KB equals zero. Uh, okay, so now you know how we do the, the manual recording, right? Basically, you're recording your screen, you're using a third-party uh, recording application. Uh, I do recommend to take that um, into some kind of editing application. If you're using QuickTime, uh, you may just need to cut the front and the end off of your clip. And you can just do that within QuickTime itself, uh, assuming you're on the Mac. 
I believe ice cream can do that as well. Uh, I'm not honestly sure because I just don't, I'm not on a PC and I don't use ice cream. Um, and OBS cannot do that. It's simple recording. It doesn't do any kind of editing. Uh, so you will need to bring that clip into an editor uh, to at the very least uh, cut off the, the front and the end of your clip. Uh, and you know maybe depending on what you're doing, what you need, maybe a couple bits in the middle there. Uh, but that's it. Uh, oh, I did want to mention the little uh, secret recording menu. Uh, so this is something that I certainly wouldn't really recommend doing. Uh, we use this menu sometimes uh, for quality testing and things like that. It's 100% beta. If it fails, uh, sorry, but don't don't come <laughs> crying to me. Um, it, it's not something. It's not a tool that that's out there to be used uh, this way, right? Uh, but if you're on Chrome, only Chrome browsers can do this. Uh, you can use this menu that is basically uh let me escape here if i go into uh showcase let's see here so if you're in showcase you can use this menu that it's the konami code if any of you are familiar with that uh but but uh if you're not you can reach out to support and ask for it if this is of any interest um and you can always come back and watch this recording. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, H. We'll get you this little menu. And down here, you have tour recording. You can see it says Chrome only. I can expand that and I can say download the 1080p at 60 frames a second. Uh, that's the one, it's the best quality. It's going to take a pretty long time because it stops every single frame uh, and records it, but it's the smoothest result. Uh, and again, it works only in Chrome. And uh, what you get is your highlight reel. You have no uh, other control the, than that. So you get the highlight reel, and then if you need to do any kind of editing, you, you go in there. Uh, to get rid of the menu, uh, you just do the Konami code again, but uh, we're not going to get into that. Just want to uh, focus on what Mia has to say, and I'll uh, give her the stage. All right. Cool. We so did now, it. Now that you, uh, yeah, we got through it. We got through it. Wow, that was a mess. <laughs> Apologize. <laughs> now that you've created a video, we're going to go over the right way to share content. And we're going to go through all of uh, the major social media sharing platforms, at least the ones that we use here at Matterport. Um, first, Instagram. It's highly visual as a high character limit of 2,200 characters, but it's kind of tricky to share, to share out links. Um, it utilizes hashtags, so hashtag away. Um, it supports landscape, but it pre presents best in a one-to-one -one square, square ratio. Um, and there's a few ways to get around the tricky link sharing. So we, uh, first is your bio link. And this link, is a static link, which means um, it's kind of, it's gonna be, it's gonna lead to the uh, page that you, you wanna drive traffic to. <clears throat> and there's also your stories where you can use the, the swipe up link. Um, uh, you can attach any link that you want to your stories, but it's a 24 hour um, story. So only, it's only available for 24 hours and uh, the third is a third-party link service like Link in Bio or Linktree, and it acts like a landing page for, for multiple links. And you're gonna use that in place of your Link in Bio or your Bio link, sorry. <laughs> and then Facebook is pretty flexible. So this is gonna be where uh, you can, sorry, my son. So you can share out, you know, um, uh, all of your content it has a high character limit, um, about 63,000 characters. Um, it utilizes hashtags, but you're gonna want, you're gonna want to limit the amount of hashtags you, you use on Facebook. And um, although the character limit is high, um, you want to keep your copy short to about one or two sentences just to keep the the engagement high. Uh, videos perform better than images on Facebook. And content can be shared directly from Instagram to Facebook instantly. So if you hook up your, your accounts, you can, you can cross-share any of your content on, on both platforms. 
Um, Facebook's, uh, did I go over hashtags? Um, I think I think I did, but um, you can use hashtags, but use them spar sparingly on Facebook, not as much as Instagram. And Twitter is mostly text-based. Um, it's really fast paced. Each post is about 200 char uh, 280 characters. Uh, images perform better than videos on Twitter. Uh, it's really good for posting the same content. So if you have like a promotion or something that you want to keep on sharing, uh, Twitter is your platform that you want to use. Um, also good for sharing evergreen content. Uh, Twitter also uses a lot of hashtags. So hashtag away on Twitter, make sure that it's relative to your content so the right people see what you post. And then LinkedIn is more, is more for your, um, you know, your professionals and your companies is gonna be your social network to connect with all of these people. Uh, native videos perform better than images on LinkedIn. Uh, plain text and blogs also perform really well. Uh, hashtags I would use sparingly on, on LinkedIn. They work, but um, don't use too much. And yeah, and the content best practices, uh, what? So the kind of content that you wanna share uh, should highlight your products and services in a really interesting and highly engaging way. Uh, you want your customers or followers to really be curious about who you are, what you do, what you offer. And um, you, know, you wanna think about the kind of content that you know, will spark curiosity or spark conversations or ideas from your followers so that you, know, you can start a conversation with them. And um, in terms of your visual content, you wanna, you wanna think of something, you wanna, you wanna think of the things that get you to stop scrolling. So like, what are the things that make you stop in your tracks when you're going through the feeds? Like, oh yeah, this, this looks really interesting. Maybe I can apply that to my own content and see how that works. Always experiment. Um, how? So demographics uh, are different on each pl platform and can even vary from, from company to company. But there are definitely some overlaps, but it's really important to know um, who your audience is and where they are. And knowing these two things will help you make a, a really solid social media plan. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so knowing these two things will help you guide, will help guide you in, you know, where you want to post, uh, who you're talking to, and how you want to talk to them. And it'll also help you focus on, like, where you want to put your resources in, because, you know, social media can be a lot. And for frequency, uh, you want to stay top of mind. So you want to develop a cadence that'll keep your customers aware of who you are and that you're still around. Uh, so it, it'll help to know when they're active um, and post during those times. You can also research, you know, generally when audiences are most active on each platform for your region. And uh, I think that might be it, Amir. That's, that's a really good uh, point you said about the frequency. Is there a difference between the different uh, platforms and how frequent, like for example, Twitter every day, LinkedIn every other day, you know, I mean, or, or does it, is it basically just like as much as possible? As, I wouldn't say as much as possible, but at least, you know, at least daily, um, once a day or every other day, every other day, you just don't want your audience to forget about you. And LinkedIn, you mentioned, obviously that's like a more professional network. How do you recommend um, doing that? Meaning like the, the type of posts that uh, that you're posting to LinkedIn versus versus Twitter. Is there like a different kind of content, I guess? Uh, because that that is, you're not selling to your readers on LinkedIn, but you want them to know who you are. Does that make sense? So, so yeah, it's more of a, an awareness thing, letting letting your audience know what your company is up to, maybe starting conversations with other other companies just to do collaborations or or networking. So yeah, uh, LinkedIn is going to be where you want to put. Uh, your company updates or um, new products that you're offering, maybe. Um, same thing with Twitter. Um, they kind of function similarly since Twitter is really text-based, um, but it's quick. It's short-form copy, so you're going to be uh, you're going to be uh, really 
a type with your copy on, on Twitter. Whereas on LinkedIn, it's a little more, you have a lot more um, character limit. So you can really like, like put up uh, your, your updates and blogs on, on LinkedIn. Okay, cool. And Instagram, you said, um, I mean, obviously is very photo video based. So using, using those assets that you have uh, on your model page, Instagram is brilliant. And then it automatically goes to Facebook. So you're kind of nailing two birds with one stone there. And uh, I love Instagram because, you know, matter per models are so visual and, you know, they, they really catch the eye, but it, it's the, the link sharing is, is what could get tricky. But once you get around to the link sharing, um, you can really direct traffic to where you really want to take them. A couple of things. One, I just posted a poll. So very interested to know, uh, you know, what social platforms you guys use. If you haven't checked it out, please go ahead and check it out. It's uh, it with, Showcase cannot be embedded into any one of these platforms, and that that's why uh, you know we we talk about the the videos that uh, you can download, whether it's the the, the teaser that's automatically created for you, or whether uh, you actually made it through my presentation <laughs> and and got something out of it, and create your own video or just an image. Even it doesn't necessarily have to be you know um, video based. Uh, that's how you kind of tease the model and link to the showcase as opposed to embedding the entire showcase uh, of the model within any one of these platforms um so so that's how that works yeah oh, also in copy you also always want to have a call to action so you want to either want to direct them to a listing or to your to your services page or you know wherever you want to take your 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 audience to you don't want to just have copy and a video you you always want to have them go somewhere brilliant brilliant that that's a good tip um so it's not just uh saying something but like asking them to click on something uh or you know polls and surveys i think are pretty popular is that true or is that just me oh yeah they, they are popular yeah people love a good quiz or a poll uh, fantastic. Anything else uh, that we should keep in mind as far as kind of discover? Where's a good way? Do you have any resources where one could discover, um, I guess, how to drum up these like, uh, you know, entertaining tweets or Facebook posts that, that draw more uh, likes and whatnot? Oh, yeah, that's... Um... It's it all really it's a learning journey, um, you know, finding out what what content works with your followers, what kind of copy resonates with them. Um, you know, each audience is different, but the more research that you do and the more uh, the more uh, the more you keep track of how your audience reacts to your post, the it'll help uh, guide you in how you present your content moving forward. Um, there's a bunch of tools that you can get to help track uh, metrics uh, to see how your posts are performing. There are some free options out there. I believe Hootsuite um, has a free, they might have a free account, don't quote me in that, but um, there, there are some, some free tracking tools that you can use to, to kind of get an idea of how your content's performing. Um, and then research, research, uh, anything and all that you can about social media it's a really deep deep ocean <laughs> and there's a lot to learn i'm still learning every day it's constantly evolving uh content types are constantly evolving tools are constantly evolving so it's um keep stay on your toes um, about social media um, what your audience is doing what they're interested in um it helps to know also um you know, just like different ways you can creatively create copy. Um, there's there's some exercises that you can do to, you know, really uh, pull out creative writing um, and it'll help you even guide, guide you on, you know, your brand voice and really help solidify what, what you're trying to do with your social media. Cool, cool. And in the end, um, you gotta get started. Like that, like doing it, you're not, you're not gonna read up on how to do it and then and then and then be able to do it. It's a it's a learning process. I think, like you like you said, uh, so um, getting that feedback, you know, from your audience, from from your uh, you know visitors or whatever, uh, and then kind of tweaking and and doing the the next one a little differently. 
Um, yeah, and keep and talking to your skill. audience. If they if they comment on something, you know, try try and keep the conversation going. It really helps. Fantastic. All right. Uh, I think with that, uh, I'd love to open up uh, the Q and A. Anything else that I wanted to cover? Uh, oh, support. I should mention this. Um, if uh, if you ever run into any problems, check out our support pages. There's a lot of information there, uh, and also obviously a way of getting in touch with us directly. Um, if you go to Matterport.com, check out the resources tab and go down to uh, support. You can see it right there. Uh, it'll take you to like this uh, support page hub, and from there you'll get frequently asked questions. You'll get uh, you scroll down towards the bottom of that. You'll get a phone number to call support. Uh, that phone number is uh, the right phone number for your location uh, in the world, wherever you might be. Uh, the phone number you see here is if you're in North America. Um, and you can always, uh, you know, email us uh, support at Matterport.com. Check that out. And as always, super important, uh, if you are the owner of your account, uh, make sure to update uh, your contact information. You know, if there's any kind of uh, reason for us to reach out for you, that's the email we use. And if you're no longer available at that email address, uh, you won't get the email and that's unfortunate. Uh, and that's it. So, uh, wait, that's not it. One more thing. Stay connected. Check us out on Facebook. You'll see all of Mia's posts. Uh, if you have a uh, model that you'd like to share with us, see it in our gallery. You can nominate your model. Uh, by going to this address, go.matterport.com slash nominate dash your dash space. And Shop Talk 27, the next Shop Talk coming up, uh, we're down to uh, doing these once a month. We have plenty of other webinars, so there's always webinars going on. Uh, but the next one, we're going to be talking about the best way to collaborate with your team. So if you are working with a team, that's definitely one you're going to want to um, check out. Questions. Uh, if you haven't already uh, asked a question, check out the question of the Q&A uh, panel. There's a little button uh, in your Zoom browser. Um, click on that, ask a question through the Q&A. Uh, we sometimes miss the ones in chat because it just doesn't come uh, through as, as well. Um, so please hit us up in the Q&A panel. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up so we can check this out. I'm also going to stop sharing so we can be full screen. All right. Uh, Rory asked, uh, please, can you give us a web page for the codes? Um, I think I did, and, but I'll, I'll do that again. So you may already have the answer to this, Rory, but uh, let's go ahead and answer that. Where you can find all of the parameters that I mentioned in my little section at the beginning of this webinar, if you go to uh, the support page right, that I just mentioned, support.matterport.com, there's a little search bar there, search for URL, hit enter. On the left column, you'll see it'll be the, either be the top or the second one down. It says URL parameters. That's our uh, support article about these parameters. Everything I mentioned is there, as well as a whole bunch of others. I recommend just you know kind of going through there, just so you kind of have it in the back of your head. Maybe one day you'll need this parameter that uh, that I you know did not mention. There's which is most of them, uh, and you'll find it useful you know uh, to customize showcase. Uh, so, so URL parameters is the name of the uh, of the support article there. Oh, I saw. You know, I did see a question, Mia, regarding uh, Pinterest. What are your thoughts on that? So, Pinterest actually, uh, our model, our models actually present pretty well on Pinterest, um, and it's easy to link out from. Um, so, yeah, I think Pinterest is a great way to share. You know, the your portfolio or even um, places you intend to scan. Um, it's a great place to, to present your models. Does, does Pinterest not do um, videos or am I wrong? Or do they do do videos or is it better to do an animated GIF? I believe it does videos now. Um, okay. They just had an update. Oh, cool. Let me double check for you. Uh, while you're checking that, I will check out some more questions. Ah, okay. Uh, John asks a good question. Is there a way to remove those movement uh, directions at the end of the highlight? So at the end of the highlight reel, I don't know if you noticed, uh, it stops and there's a little box there that kind of instructs you on what to do. Uh, I believe there is, and I think, uh, if memory serves me right, it is ampersand help equals zero. Uh, you have you you either have the 
So all these parameters, you have a couple options, either zero or one to activate it or deactivate it. Sometimes they have more. Uh, you'll see that on the parameters page that I mentioned, but I believe that help equals zero is the one to remove that. That being said, um, that's kind of part of the reason why I recommend uh, trimming the end, right? So just before that comes up, uh, you obviously record through that, but uh, after you've recorded and you're done, you're, you're in you know QuickTime or Ice Cream, you can kind of trim the end to just before that, that little um, window came up. Uh, but I think help equals zero is the one you, you're going to want, John. And um, confirming that videos do work on Pinterest now. Fantastic. Cool. Um, all right. Is, is, is hashtag Matterport Media a preferred hashtag for uh, Insta? Yeah, you can use um, Matterport Media or hashtag Matterport Your Space is the one that well, we like to use for, um, uh, you know, sharing out your your models. So if you have a model that you want to share, um, hashtag Matterport Your Space and we can give it a share. Have you seen other hashtags that people have been using with their Matterport models that we should consider? Or uh, maybe as you're going through, if you're kind of in the thick of it with uh, you know, social media, you see a, an interesting hashtag, you can just search it and see just how popular it really is. Yeah. So yeah, Matterport Your Space is the main one. Um, just hashtag Matterport is probably going to be the most commonly used hashtag for us. Um, yeah, it I would say it's those those top two. Um, some people like to use Pro2, um, but then uh, it's not as common as Matterport or Matterport Your Space. Another question here from uh, PJ, do you need to be logged in as the administrator uh, log in to create a highlight reel for the properties uh, Matterport? Uh, or can you do that as a visitor or uh, perspective uh, from a visitor's perspective too? Visitors cannot uh, tweak the highlight reel. They can basically just either play, uh, you know, stop it, move around, start it again, things like that. Maybe use it for navigation uh, as a way to move through the model uh, more quickly and efficiently. But they can't do anything as far as like capturing uh, little highlights and adding them to the reel. You don't have to be an administrator. You can be a collaborator, but you do need to be a collaborator with editing uh, access. Uh, so you do need access to the to the workshop to the back end there in order to create and edit the highlight reel. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Will Matterport Capture be uh, available for Windows Seven soon? Uh, Matterport Capture. Uh, that's referring to the uh, the capture app on your mobile device uh, that you connect to the camera. Uh, no, unfortunately, that's not going to be available for uh, Windows 7. Um, Matterport Capture is just um, on iOS and Android. Uh, Android, not sure if they are supporting the BLK yet, but most everything else they are supporting so you can connect with android to the pro 2 that's more new that we we just released that not too long ago so it's in the process and it will uh be that android can uh can do everything that ios can do um in the near future but right now it only connects to the pro 2 all the pro cameras pro 2 pro 1 uh, uh the pro light um and the 360 cameras as well uh, but it can't connect to the, the you know, high-end uh, the, the laser cameras like the BLK. Um, all right. Uh, we, so, yep, Steve asked about Pinterest. We talked about that. All right. Let's see. What else do we have here? Is there a URL parameter to remove the matter tags? Uh, how about the 360 parameter? Um, so, yes, uh, Roy, there is the MT equals zero parameter that I mentioned to remove matter tags. You can also... So... Uh, most visitors are not going to know that trick where they can just press the letter P in order to remove the matter tags, right? Uh, so if you want to send a link to somebody and not include the matter tags in that, uh, you don't have to go into workshop, disable all of them, and then send it out. Um, because obviously then anybody who wants to see the matter tags won't be able to. What you can do is use these parameters to just customize the link for that specific user. And then they don't have to know what they're doing with Showcase. They just walk through it uh, just like anybody else would without seeing the matter tags. Uh, again, that's the MT equals zero. Um, there's also 
um, parameters for the uh, the 360 views that you pin. You place those pins uh, in your uh, dollhouse to access 360 views. You can uh, disable them as well via parameters, uh, as well as that little portal that's used to navigate from the inside view to a 360 view and back. You can also enable and disable those. So again, lots of things to see there. Uh, I just added the link in the uh, in the chat. So open that up and check it out. Um, that's about it for the question. Let's see how we're doing on that poll. And we're just about out of time. So this is cool. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and end the, the poll at this point. Um, I assume everybody can see this. This is the first time I've done a, a live poll. Um, oh, here we go, share results. So there we go, now share there, now you can see it. Uh, Facebook, super popular, obviously. So uh, any tip, I, you, you covered Facebook, Mia, I know, um, but any, uh, Anything to add uh, about Facebook and Instagram? Yeah, well, They're both like top of mind. Yeah, right? they're they're about you know they they work together. Facebook is really easy to to share out from. Uh, it's really flexible. Uh, just you know try to keep your copy about two sentences and under, just to you know because people don't really like reading long copy. <laughs> uh, keep it keep it interesting and always have a CTA. Call yeah. Action. Uh, calls, calls to action, right? Uh, yeah, the long copy uh, blogs that actually do a really good job as portraying yourself as an expert in your field, which is absolutely something that you should do, um, is is really good, you know, uh, on a blog on your website, right? Um, that helps with a lot of things like SEO and, and whatnot. And again, uh, you can link short copy on Facebook and Twitter to the long stuff in the blog for people who are interested in, in reading that and getting to, to know you better. Uh, so there's definitely a place for long form, but not on social. Um, and it's interesting that not as many are using Instagram. So, I mean, would you say that when you have those two linked together, you should just, I mean, you can just use Instagram since it's automatically posting to Facebook, or is there still a reason uh, sometimes with some posts to just put it in Facebook and, and not do Instagram. Yeah, you can definitely just use Instagram and directly link out to your Facebook. Um, but oftentimes people like to post on Facebook just because it's easier to, you know, um, direct people from directly from your copy to wherever you want to direct traffic to. Um, so it, 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 they kind of have two different um, uh purposes. You know, uh, Instagram is just there to catch your attention, uh, capture the, the eye and, and, you know, get people curious about what you do. And Facebook's a little more informative about what it is that you're posting about. You can have, um, it can, you can be more descriptive and you can be, uh, um, you, you know, you can, it's just, it's just easier to direct people from your copy on Facebook. Um, Instagram, it's, it's more interesting to look at but it's just harder to share out on uh, direct traffic from Instagram unless you have, um, unless you have, oops, sorry, my, my cat is laying down on my keyboard. <laughs> um, unless you have, you know, a, a third party link service that'll that'll help. Maybe next time we'll learn more about those uh, third party services that, that can help. There's a there's a bunch of free ones too. So um, a lot of them have a, have a free account um, or you can purchase a subscription where it removes all the banners and stuff. Cool, yeah, definitely like to learn more about that. Uh, but unfortunately we are out of time. So uh, we'll keep that topic uh, for next time and all the different like tools and uh, things that uh, that people can uh, can use to uh, to optimize, I guess, their, their social game. Uh, yeah. If that's an interesting topic, by the way, reach out to us at webinars at matterport.com and let us know so we can plan for that. Otherwise, Thank you very much for putting up with us today. I really appreciate it. We had uh, not a few uh, mistakes and, and bugs and uh, technical issues uh, that, um, yeah, feel bad about. But uh, again, thank you very much. Mia, super, super huge thank you to you for uh, sharing your knowledge and wisdom uh, with social uh, media and, and I appreciate your, your helping us out today. Thanks for uh, dragging me out of my cave. <laughs> Anytime. All right, uh, appreciate uh, your attendance and hope to see you at the next Shop Talk. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.